my message today, I think is very consistent with that mantra, with that prayer. It is keep on keeping on. Behold, one day the goal. I begin with a quote from Paramahansa Yogananda. By Kriya Yoga, one's consciousness functions on a higher plane. Devotion to the infinite spirit then arises spontaneously in one's heart. Like the ripe fruit falls from the vine. It's a natural occurrence. This series explores some of the innate divine qualities that help us reach that highest spiritual goal, but also to live well along the way. The title from today's message comes from, it is a favorite saying of the yoga master, Lahiri Mahashaya. And he would say, Banat, Banat, Banjai, Banat, Banat, Banjai. Literally, it means making making one day made. But essentially, it means striving, striving, then behold, one day, the divine goal. And it was his frequent advice to encourage students to persevere with their meditation practice. He said, in every breath, commune with the soul. In every breath, commune with the soul. Practice makes a person perfect. Try and try, and perfection will come. And really, this message is for seekers of all time, isn't it? I mean, it, it is encouragement. Don't stop short of the goal of spiritual realization. Don't give up on yourself. Persevere. Be steady, be steadfast, stay anchored in soul awareness and keep returning your attention to that, to become established in that. So you're not whipped around by the winds of life. Kriya yoga practice requires that kind of steadiness. The purpose of Kriya yoga is to reduce or eliminate the physical, mental or emotional interference with soul awareness so that we can live guided by higher wisdom, guided by the soul. Steadiness in meditation and ordering of our life priorities supports that. Steady, steady, steady. Intermittent meditation practice and an irregular lifestyle disturbs the mind and upsets our balance. When we are balanced, steady, and calm, we're much better equipped to meet life's ongoing challenges. I'm sure you've noticed that. But the question comes, of course, how can we be steadfast and stable when life itself is so unstable? Well, I think the spiritual key is to remember that there is nothing, think about this, there's nothing steadier, more stable than the soul itself. There's nothing steadier or more stable than the soul. Our essential self is unmoving, unchanging, supremely free from all distraction and infinitely resourceful. It's an inside job, this perseverance. Lahiri said, in every breath, commune with the soul. So draw your strength to persevere from the experience of your inner stability. The promises of the spiritual path are great, but so it seems also great are life's perils, incessant disturbances and distractions. Being steadfast on our spiritual path meaning having a constant, not an intermittent spiritual focus, consistent meditation and strategies for healthy, balanced living requires commitment, courage really to orient our life in that way in the face of obstacles. And it takes time to establish. There's a beautiful verse in the Shiva Samhita that says here in yoga practice, there are many obstacles. 
frightful and difficult to ward off. Nevertheless, the yogi should practice even if he is at his last breath. Discovering the path of self and God realization is like a great homecoming. At least I know it was for me and I've observed that with so many others. Like, you know, sort of like the prodigal, you know, who's been lost out there in the desert, out there in the land of sorrows. And we make this turn that is yoga and return to the joyous country of the soul. We find that a dharmic life awaits us, a life of higher purpose, as we learn that we can cooperate with the infinite and feel our life is divinely supported. And at this time, there's usually a great surge of hope and energy at this stage on the path. You know, it feels like we come alive again. And we set up a practice. We start to sit, to meditate. We study, we contemplate surrender, at least. <laughs> we try to figure out what that means and what it is. We learn that Kriya Yoga is an accelerated enlightenment path. And perhaps we imagine at that juncture that enlightenment is not that far off. Mm. Progress can be very noticeable at this stage and very encouraging. And as the Bhagavad Gita notes in the second chapter, the 40th verse, even a little bit of this practice removes great fear. This, this practice being both meditation and the practice of jnana yoga, discernment, learning what we are as spiritual being, even a little of this discipline protects one from great danger, the verse tells us. And we begin to experience that. We feel a new freedom, a new aliveness. Then things arise, <laughs> things that interfere with our rapid enlightenment plan. Karma. Karma. So first we have the word dharma. It's very exciting. Then we have the word karma. It's not so exciting. <laughs> the accumulated effects of our physical, mental, or verbal actions. As we're, so we're dealing with that, as well as the ever-changing influences of nature. So here's how it is. We can wake up fairly quickly. And what I mean by that is that we can realize what we are as spiritual beings and begin to discern how to live with higher purpose. That can happen fairly quickly, and that's a really good thing. But I have to say, I have to clarify that that's actually not the end, but it's, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of our journey. And so at this stage, we're no longer completely deluded, but we're not yet liberated. So now it's time to work out our karma. And this is the time to persevere. So karma is the potency of past action uh, that can bring forth either future joy or future sorrow, depending on its nature. And karma is stored as impressions in the mental field. It's the answer to the questions, what's taking so long? <laughs> Why is this so hard? Why do I do what I don't want to do? And why don't I do what I said I would and I want to? Karma. So we persevere with our meditation and our other spiritual practices in order to purify the mental field of those karmic impressions and to learn how to avoid causing suffering for ourselves or for others, either now or in the future. Many of you are familiar with that pithy verse from Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. It's found in the second chapter, 16th verse. Future suffering is to be avoided. And when I teach Yoga Sutra, I always say the, the good news about that is it means it can be 
And that's really part of our spiritual journey. But this can be a difficult stage on the path when we're working out our karma because we become more discerning. We start to see more clearly and we see how we have created problems or contributed to sorrow in our life and in the lives of others. So when you know this juncture, when you've been there or when you are there, you can understand much more fully why Lahiri Mahashaya would so often say, keep on keeping on and behold one day the goal. Persevere. Many years ago, I was listening to my guru, Roy Jean Davis, speak about enlightenment and the full liberation of consciousness. And as he was speaking about enlightenment and liberation, I was looking at him so intently and I was silently wondering, are you there yet? Are you there yet? And of course, I didn't speak this aloud, but there is, <laughs> there is that connection between guru and disciple. And he paused for a moment and he turned to me and he said, I still have karma to work out. And I observed over the following years how steadfast he was, how dedicated and how increasingly radiant he became and clear. In 2019, just three days before his passing from this world, he gave his very last talk to our community. And during that talk, he spoke those words from Lahiri Mahashaya. But that time he said them in a way that I had never heard him say them before. I had heard him use that phrase, keep on keeping on. Striving, striving, behold one day the gold, goal. <laughs> but this time he said, doing, doing, done. And he said it so clearly and pointedly. I believe he was. It was an affirmation of liberation, doing, doing, done. So here's the blessing for us to consider about the spiritual path. All the way to liberation is liberation. All the way to liberation is liberation. All the way to yoga is yoga. As St. Catherine of Siena famously said, the path to heaven lies through heaven. All the way to heaven is heaven. The Kriya Yoga is both the way for reaching the goal of liberation, freedom from being unduly influenced by karma or the processes of nature, and it is the goal itself. It's both the way and the goal. We live intentionally and we persevere with spiritual disciplines, not only because we are living a higher purpose and working on our karma, we do it because it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable way to live and it should be an enjoyable way to live. If the way that we persevere and live our spiritual life is not enjoyable, then we're missing the point. And we have lost contact with the soul's joy. That's an unsustainable path. We ultimately cannot persevere without joy. Spiritual life is not a task or a project. It's how we live. So why not live in joy, like Yogananda? In every breath, commune with the soul. In every breath, commune with the soul. Practice makes a person perfect. Try and try. Perfection will come. Keep on keeping on. Behold, 
one day the goal. Om.